Good morning, everyone. Okay, mm, it's 11.30 now, so I will start with a short introduction first. Okay, one moment. Okay, if you have any question, you may leave it at the chat box here. If you have uh, any issue to join these teams, you please uh, log out again and log in. So good morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Lee Won Xiang from Utah. I'm also the KLSF Secretariat. Welcome to today's workshop, Wonder of Taxonomy 5.0, Making Your Own Homemade Butter. Taking, thank you for taking time out and being here today. Okay. Emulsion is a mixture of fat and water molecules, and these two molecules can be separated from one another by means of physical force, shaking or blending, and so on. When cream is shaken, the fat molecules start separating from the liquid and clumping together. Eventually, the fat molecules cling together in one clump, forming butter. What remains is butter milk. The objective of this workshop are first, participants will be exposed to natural emulsion and how its component could be separated by a conventional method. Second, participants will learn to produce your own homemade butter during the process too. So now I would like to introduce our two speakers today. First is uh, Miss Grace Ting Chen Jing. She is currently a lecturer in the Department of Science and Engineering Center for Foundation Study, Sungai Long Campus, Utah. Second is Ms. Nabila Binti Abdullah Alem Shide. She is currently a senior lecturer in the Department of Science and Engineering also, uh, set from Center of Foundation Studies, Sungai Long Campus, Utah. Both of them are the dedicated academic staff in teaching biology subjects and they're involved actively in the STEM-related activities like workshop, uh, webinar, and so on. So now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Ms. Grace and Nabila. Hi. Mm, we wait for a while, I think they are connecting. Hi, Miss Nam. I think we cannot hear anything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Let's do it again. I want Hi, it. Uh, we are so glad to have you joining our workshop today. It this is, is Miss Nabila. Yes. And, and Miss Grace. Miss Grace. Thank you for spending this good weekend with us. I do hope we have a lot of fun later on doing our own butter. So this is how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do, Ms. Nabila? We're going to make some homemade butter. Yes. So after this, uh, before we actually go to the hands-on, this is how we're going to do it. Uh, Ms. Nabila is going to explain a little bit about the science behind making this uh, butter. So because it's a STEM workshop, so it's okay for us to learn, not very complicated, maybe a little bit about the science behind, about emotions, about all the things that make the butter working later on in the hands-on. So after a around our explanation so she's going to do the demonstrations about how to do about the procedures about making this butter so uh, basically you will be seeing her face most of the time because <laughs> i'll be the one holding the camera to make sure camera that you, i'll be the cameraman to make sure that you see the procedures clearly uh, so now later on if later you might be seeing some blur let's say, let's say the camera holding is quite shaky or blur then you cannot see clearly just mm -hmm. let us know you can mute unmute anytime let us know and then we can adjust it for you just right? pick up and whenever you yep. want to it's all okay right. so let's pass the time to miss nabilana all right so i'm going to be sharing uh, my screen first so my face is not going to be there all right i hope everyone is ready we are so happy to have you today i think my slide is already on screen Yes, yes, we can see. All right, thank you. Thank you, Miss Lee. Okay, so I think everybody is aware that today we are going to be making your own, not your own, our own homemade butter. And uh, for your information, this is actually under uh, Wonder of Taxonomy workshop. This is actually the fifth uh, year, I think, we're doing this uh, workshop. It's just that uh, this workshop is slightly different because it is online. Most of the time, it is a physical workshop. All right, so without further ado, 
let's just try to understand the science behind this because like what Miss Grace mentioned earlier, this is a STEM workshop. So there must be some science behind making your own butter. OK, so if you notice, I already posted uh, about the, uh, on the list of ingredients uh, that you can prepare for today's experiment. And if you really notice, uh, some of the main ingredients will include it actually include milk and whipping cream. So why are we using milk? Why are we using whipping cream? Now, I believe all of you know whipping cream actually comes from milk. And because of that, that makes both of them comes from the same source and they are actually emulsions. So that is the science behind today's activity. We want to know what is emulsion. All right. So emulsion is actually a mixture of fat droplets and water. I don't know whether you know this or not. They are actually a mixture. They can mix. All right. Now, if I show you like this, can somebody just pick up? Let me know. Is this an emulsion? If I show this picture over here, anybody? Yeah. No. Guys, am I talking alone? <laughs> I'm so sad. Anyway. The oil is <laughs> not. Yeah, they are not. They are not emulsion. You know. Thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you for answering me. So if you are given a glass of uh, oil on top and water below here. You don't call this an emulsion because they do not mix. Uh, that is the difference, you know. Emulsion is something that mix. What is this? Sorry. Okay, so emulsion are something that mix the fat droplets and water mix. So that's how if you see, if you look at your milk, it's only one uniform texture. So that is emulsion. Now, what is the difference? The next question is, what is the difference between milk and whipping cream. Now the difference, maybe I can just say, <laughs> the difference is in terms of the content. Now the content, or oh, just now it's not emotional. Now the content of milk, milk actually composed of about 88% water, about 4% fat, and the remaining about 9% are others. Anybody want to take a guess here? Can you tell me what are the others? Anybody has any clue, any idea what are these others? Anyone? Do you know? Make content what? Ah? Yeah? No? Uh, Am I hearing? Milk solid. I don't know. Milk solid. Yes, very good. That is under 4% fat. Lactose. Lactose. Yes, that is very good. Lactose. Germs. What yeah. else? Yeah. What else? Yes. Keep it going. What else? Any other idea? How about protein? Do you have protein in milk? What do you think? Got protein or not? Yes? No? Yes. Yes. Very good. Okay. Yeah, so. You um, have vitamins. Very good. So all this we consider as protein, a mixture of protein, mixture of sugar, which is the carbohydrate lactose, and also some other minerals. Okay, so that comprise the other nine percent. Okay, so that is about milk. Now we're going to go to whipping cream. So what is the difference between whipping cream and milk? Whipping cream, I told you earlier, it comes from milk. The difference is whipping cream comes from the fat-rich part of the milk. So about 35%, you take out the fat and then you concentrate the fat so that the, the, the whole compound comprises about 35% comprise about or more fat. So that's why it becomes a bit solidified. So that's the difference between whipping cream and milk. Now here, I have another picture, a very maybe to you uh, look a bit complex this is actually how uh, the fat looks like in terms of molecular structure now if you don't understand it's okay never mind it's not important at the moment it's just to show you all right now next question now we understand already what is milk what is whipping cream we want to know how is it possible for this fat and water to mix now, because milk comes from cows, from goats, from buffaloes, from animals, some also from human. Okay, so <laughs> of course, this one, uh, the, the process actually happens inside your body. You have a, a, a very uh, interesting process that causes these two mixture, these two things to mix together. But do you know, it, you can also produce your own emulsion by doing what? By just using vigorous movement or vigorous motion. Now, when you use physical, vigorous, very strong movement, you can actually force these fat droplets to be broken. Now, when the, for, when the fat droplets are broken, they tend to find each other and they clump together. So when they clump together, 
that is when we're going to see how butter is produced. So in our experiment today, in our activity, not experiment lah, in our activity today, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put some vigorous motion and see how the fat actually come up from milk. It's going to be very interesting. So I hope you can follow us later. Okay, so basically that is the uh, concept behind today's activity. All right, now before we uh, move on, now let's just get to know some of our dairy products. Of course, there are types of dairy products, but the one that we want to focus today will be on these two, butter and cheese. So what is the difference between butter and cheese? Butter is when you take out the oil from the milk. But cheese is when you take out the protein from the milk. That's the difference. Okay, in, in uh, milk, you have a, a special protein, it's called casein, it's written here, casein, right? So, uh, for you to produce uh, cheese, you want to take up this casein, you want them to clump together because protein, just like fat, they can also clump together. When they clump, that is when you get cheese. Now, next question is, just now, right, we see, we see that um, uh, fat can be removed from milk by using vigorous movement. But that is not the case for cheese. You do not put vigorous movement to take out the protein. Here, we are going to use another method. Anybody has any idea how milk is taken out? How casein is taken out from milk? Anyone? Let me just test my audience first, my participants first. There's a hint on the slide. Hint? Ah, yes, there is a hint on the slide. Anybody wants to try? There's Lemon, acidic. Component. Yes, very good. We can use lemon to remove the protein from the milk. Okay, because why? Lemon has a certain pH. Anybody knows whether it's neutral or alkaline or uh, acidic? Protein is alkaline. I think. Protein is alkaline. Yes. How about lemon? Acidic. Very good. So there is an interaction, you know, if you have acidic mixture and alkaline mixture, they will interact with one another. And when they interact, you will get this coagulation. It's like clumping. All this protein clumping will clump together. You will get what you call as curd. So what is curd? This is a picture of curd. Or you all, actually, almost all of us uh, eat curd before. One of the examples of curd is tofu or your tafu fa. Right? So, tafufa is actually a curd. So, curd is actually made up by this, this uh, process of co coagulation, whereby you want the protein to clump together. So, in this process, you can just use lemon juice. It's as easy as that. Okay? All right. So, thank you so much for answering uh, my questions. Next, I thank we, both of us, thank you very much for all your interesting questions. We have received uh, quite a number of questions. Maybe I can tackle some of these questions first. Okay, uh, some of you asked me, uh, ask us any milk will do or any specific milk needed to make butter. Now for today's uh, activity, it will be best if you can get fresh milk. Uh, and it will be not so good if you get a low fat milk. Because low fat milk, they have lesser content of fat. So because of that, you wouldn't get so much butter from it. Okay, so that is the, uh, the answer to first question. Second question, can own homemade a creativity butter? Later, I'm going to show you. Uh, maybe one type of different butter, uh, we're going to variation. put uh, a variation of butter. Of course, there are a lot of butters out there. You can put garlic, you can put parsley. So we're going to show you one example of how to do it. Okay, uh, third question. How about peanut butter? Unfortunately, uh, for today, we cannot make peanut butter because even though the name comes with the word butter, but peanut butter actually comes from a different, a different source. It comes uh, solely from uh, peanuts. So you do not make peanut butter from milk. You actually made it from uh, peanuts. So we're not going to tackle that today. Next question, how long can the butter last? Now, if your technique is good, maybe it will last about two to three weeks. I've uh, I have also read that uh, it can last up until one month. So there will be a step later on. I will show you which step actually determines how long the butter can last. Okay, next one. Is this homemade butter suitable for vegetarian? I told you just now. Now, this one depends on uh, what kind of vegetarian are you. Because uh, I told you the, the, the uh, butter actually is going to come from the milk. So if you are the kind of vegetarian that do not take any animal produce, so unfortunately this will not be suitable for you. But if you are a kind of vegetarian that do take uh, animal produce, so this one will be suitable. Okay, next question. 
what are the differences between low range priced uh, pure butter and high range priced pure butter in the market? Okay, this one, it depends on the source of milk that you uh, that you actually use to produce the butter. Some butter, of course, most butter is uh, it comes from cow milk, but there are also butter that actually comes from from uh, good milk and buffalo, if I'm not mistaken, buffalo's milk. So uh, different animal, they have different fat content. So if you have more fat content, so that causes your butter, the pure butter is going to be more of a, a higher, pr a higher uh, price range. Okay, next question. What is the difference in terms of process for vegan butter? Again, vegan, uh, do not take any uh, animal produce. So normally the butter comes from a plant uh, derived, uh, plant derived uh, source, for example, soy milk or uh, some vegetable oil. But the process is going to be different if you're going to use uh, what uh, the uh, plant oil because you need a process known as hydrogenation. So for you to you to do to to have hydrogenation to happen, you need other uh, ingredients. Uh, this one I have to, to to find out what are the ingredients, but they use more ingredients uh, to cause the oil to clump together, the fat to clump together. So the process is different than this one. And that brings us to the very last question. Will there be a PDF version of steps as well as the science behind the process? Okay. Now, science behind the process, I already explained. I hope you can follow me. And about the PDF version, actually, we just found, uh, we just uh, aware about these questions this morning. So since there is a request for this, uh, we will prepare the PF, uh, PDF version. Uh, maybe it will be available later today, but not so soon. Uh, so uh, we will post this in our Microsoft Team uh, channel. All right. So thank you so much for the wonderful questions. All right. We, appreciate. we really appreciate all the questions. It shows how much you are interested in this uh, workshop. Okay, so anyway, enough about all the concept. It's actually a very simple concept. Now, uh, next, we're going to look at the ingredients. I actually listed the same ingredients and materials in the Microsoft Teams. Uh, now, again, this is, it is not compulsory for you to have all these ingredients, but of course, it will be very, very interesting, very, very interactive if you yeah, manage to get them. Okay? Yeah. Any more, Miss Chris? No. Okay. Please follow us from step one. To yes. <laughs> yes. Correct. Now, if you do have all of them ready, uh, maybe you can just prepare them, get them ready somewhere. Uh, and are you ready, everyone? Let's get started. So for us to get started, uh, just give me a few seconds. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to move to my kitchen. While I'm doing this, I hope you are also moving together with me. We're going to go to our kitchen. Humble kitchen. This is no. not okay. Where are? Where are? Where are? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, welcome again. Uh, Welcome to our humble kitchen. This is a very small kitchen, but it has been very, very useful. A lot of magical experiments have been here, so it's okay if it is small as long as it is useful. Now, what I'm going to show you is all the ingredients and materials that we're going to use today. So I have a bowl, mixing bowl. You can use this, uh, a sieve or colander. I think I didn't put in the list. This is a measuring cup. This is a whisk. These are the materials, uh, the ingredients. Whipping cream, of course, you don't need that much. But the most important thing is the fat content, at least 35%. I have a big, uh, a big bottle here, a big uh, box. Next is salt. My salt is slightly different color. It's okay. You can use normal salt. A bowl. A bowl. Fresh uh, milk. Any brand will do. Yes. Next is the lemon juice. 
I'm going to use a rubber band later. It's okay if you don't have all this. Uh, we're going to go step by step slowly. Okay, a cheesecloth or a gauze, saucepan or a pot. Oh. Then here I have some bowls and a spatula. Okay, so this is how we're going to do Should we give them some time to yes. get ready? Yeah, so this is how we're going to do it, everyone. Uh, if you have all of the things ready, you can uh, arrange them first. I'm going to give you about three minutes, maybe three minutes. Is three minutes okay? Mm -hmm. I think okay. Three minutes for you to get prepared. We're going to do this together, so don't worry. So I need uh, a favor from you. So for you to be able to see me clearly, if you are not uh, not familiar with uh, Microsoft Teams, this is what you do. You go to the participants list. There is a symbol there, right? Participants list. Or if you are looking at the screen now, if you are looking at me right now, can you just click right click? Is it mm, right click? Right click on the box of uh, that shows my face, and then right click, uh, right click, and then you uh, click on the spotlight so that I'm on the bigger screen so that you can see what's happening here. Okay. Is that okay? Please spotlight, Miss Nabila. Spotlight? Yes. <laughs> oh, spotlight. Yes, you are okay. spotlighted. Spotlight, huh? Yes. Okay, already spotlight. Next thing I want to do, I want everybody to do with me. So if I speak too fast, which I prone to do, so just uh, open up your mic, just speak up, let me know if I am too fast. If I am too slow, so you can let me know because um, it's best if we can do together. Okay, okay, let's um, get started. Giving you three minutes. Oh, three, three minutes, right? Okay, <laughs> three minutes to get ready. I'm going to give you three minutes. Can you see the time? Okay. Another three minutes, we come back. Hmm. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, uh, kids, you can do this. With, you can do this with your parents. Parents, you can do this with your kids or your family members. Let's make it a very bonding time. Yeah, bonding time. Let's make it a bonding time. It is a weekend anyway. So let's try to do this together. We can get a bit messier here. Okay. Hi dear all, uh, if you um, want to do, do it together, please prepare your materials or if you can't make it, so please wait for a while. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Miss Lee. Thank you for <laughs> informing them. I'm not sure whether everybody is ready with the ingredients or not. So if you don't have them, it's okay because it's not compulsory. Okay, so for today, even though I listed a lot of ingredients, right, we're going to start with our very first uh, product, which is to produce uh, butter. Now, to produce butter, for your information, these are the only things you need. So I just need whipping cream. That's the ingredients. That will do. Now, how about the rest? That will be something that I'm going to expose later on. Okay, but to produce butter, it's only this. And of course, um, using bowl, colander, the <laughs> measuring cup, as well as a, as a whisk. Now, if you don't want to use a whisk, it's okay. You can also use the mixer, the blender. All right, so now let's get started. I hope you have all your ingredients with you. Okay, so if you have 200 ml of whipping cream, we just pour all of them inside. Now I have here a half cup measuring cup, 125 ml. Mm -hmm. And you can see or not. Okay, so I'm going to pour out. I'm going to use just a bit, uh, just for the purpose of demo. But when you do this at home, maybe you can use more than this to produce more butter. Okay, I'm shaking here. <laughs> Relax. So you just pour everything into the mixing bowl. All right. Then, what do we do next? Remember to make butter. You just 
to just use vigorous movement. So you just use the wrist and keep on shaking. Shake, 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 shake. Now here, can you hear me over the sound? I hope everybody can hear me lah. So you just put vigorous movement, motion. About one minute. Now you will see that the texture will change after one minute. Now here it's very liquidy. Now everybody shake, 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 shake. Gonna shake. We're gonna see the texture is going to change later. Now here I need your patience. You have to be patient during this. Okay, can you see? It's getting thicker and thicker. I think mothers would know. It's too big. Oh, sorry. Now, this is the first phase. It's already becoming quite thick. Now, for mothers, if you are baking, normally you stop at this process. It's already become a, a whipping cream. So, what happened here is there is another process known as coalescence. So what happened during this process is the oil, oh, I'm sorry, the oil, the air uh, from surrounding actually interacts with your uh, oil. So the clump causes the air to clump together with the butter. So that's why, with the uh, oil droplet, sorry. So that's why uh, it becomes solidified. Now, normally you stop here, right? But in this activity, you have to continue. Continue risking it. Another three minutes. This one, it, yeah, it takes quite long this time. Patient. It needs about, about uh, three minutes. So here, there are a lot of ways of doing it. You can use mixer. And then uh, I also read uh, that you can use a mason jar. Just put everything into a jar. And then shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. I like having a tea show here. Okay, just shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Now here you will see that the colour will start to change. Just now it's white. Just now it's becoming more and more yellow. Now just continue. But three minutes, huh? I hope everyone is doing with me. This one requires a lot of patience. You can use mixture. Of course, it's faster. But here, I want to show you that it can be done with hands. Okay, now it's becoming more and more yellow. Keep on, keep, uh, keep it going. Normally, it took about like three to four minutes for you to do so. So, please continue to shake. <laughs> of course, if you do with a mixer, it takes faster. Lah. It's a good exercise in the morning as well. <laughs> yeah, during the MCO, for you can exercise, right? Ah, can you see? It's becoming like a, it become more solid, like a curds like that. Now we continue. This is the second phase, second third. Third phase, I think. As you see this, don't give up. Keep on swirling. Keep on... Almost there. Moving. Man. You see water coming up. That is actually our buttermilk. Yes. Everyone, can you see? This is the one that we want. Okay, you can see there are like fat molecules, a bit oily here. The, 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 the solid is a bit oily and you have water coming out. Like what Miss Grace mentioned, this is known as the buttermilk. So what I do normally, I just keep it going so that all the fat come out. It is separated from the water solution, watery solution. Okay, just to keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah, you can, you can continue, but actually it's enough lah. It's enough. So this is what we want actually. We want the solid, the fatty solid. That so, will be our butter. Yes, this is your butter, butter fat. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next step. I hope everybody get it. Can I see, can I know if anybody is following me? Do you get the same thing? Maybe you want to show what's happening there? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> you can just uh, open up your camera if you want, but of course, not compulsory so this is what we want right okay that if uh if it is okay i'm going to go to the next step if i am too fast do let me know all right so moving on we're going to separate the fat from uh the buttermilk so here we just use a colander sieve put it on a bowl and then just pour out everything okay next Maybe you're going to press a bit. You don't want the buttermilk to be uh, inside your butter. 
Why? Because if there is a lot of buttermilk inside your butter, there is a mixture, eh? it's going to cause your butter to be easily spoiled. So we want to try to remove as much as possible. Now, this is the first step I will do. The next step. So basically, before we go to the next step, I want to show you this first. Um, this is the buttermilk. So this buttermilk, it has its function. You can use it for baking because some baking, some uh, cake requires buttermilk. You can also put it in your coffee, make it more creamier. Okay, so don't throw this away. It is still useful. Okay. That is buttermilk. This is the side product. Now, the main product, this is what you do, everyone. Just take it out and put back into the bowl. We're going to do some washing here. We need to wash our butter. Okay, so how do you wash? You just use normal water. Now, this process is the process that is important. This is the process that determines whether your butter can be stored longer or can be, can be stored uh, uh, in a short while. Okay, what do you do here? I'm just going to press my butter to remove the excess buttermilk. Again, I told you earlier, right? Buttermilk is the reason uh, why your butter is easily spoiled. So I'm just going to press, press, squeeze, you know, squeeze the buttermilk out. Now, how do I know when it is done? I'm going to look at this uh, solution, this water. If the water is cloudy like this, meaning you have to do another round of washing. So we're going to go to the second round. Press, 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 press while you are doing this. Squeeze, 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 squeeze all the buttermilk out. Oh, it's still not clear here. Yeah? Let me do another round later, Miss Grace. Sure. Those who are following, I hope you are with me. I hope you are at the same step as me. All right. So this is the second step. Still cloudy. Remove that. Going for the third washing. Okay, squeeze again, make sure all the buttermilk come out. Squeeze you can that. see the water is getting clearer now. Yes, that's what we want. Clearer and clearer water. Should we go for the fourth or that's it? I think that's it. I think this Should be okay. enough. Now for the purpose of uh, today's activity, then more, I'm just going to stop until there. You can continue uh, because it, it can be clearer than this. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this. And then we are done. Next step, now how do I get a proper butter? Okay, next step, just removed. Okay, here, it is no longer emulsion. So that's why you can see the water just being removed. It will not mix. It will not uh, mix together with your butter. Okay, no longer in emulsion here. So next step, this is what you do, everyone. If you want your butter to be unsalted, you can just cast it after this. Cast meaning you put shape. Maybe you can put it in a casting bowl, something like that. Okay, but now for today, uh, I want to make a salted butter. So I'm going to put some salt. Maybe one pinch is enough. I want it to be saltier, two pinches. Just put them together. And then mix. The water, don't worry about the water. If you have excess water, it's okay. It's just going to be removed later on. I'm mixing them. Now, just now, there is uh, a question about how creative you can be with your butter. This is the step whereby you can be creative with your butter. Maybe we can use uh, a herb, Miss Grace. What herb do you want? Oregano. Oregano. We have oregano today. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So today I'm going to use oregano. We're going to make oregano butter. Here you can, uh, other than oregano, you can also use uh, parsley, barley. That would be interesting. Okay, that much is enough, I think. How much you want it to be inside your butter? Again, totally up to you. It's based on your preference. Maybe you can put capsicum as well. A lot of things you can do here. And that's it. That's the mixture of uh, oregano butter that I need today. Okay, next step. Once done, what do we do? Now, this butter, if you see, it's very, uh, it's a melted form. So, I want it to solidify. How do I do that? Next step will be this. I'm going to use a baking paper. 
So I will shape it. Again, here you can use any uh, container. If you want to use a container, it's okay. A plastic container or a mold. If you want to put into an ice cube mold, also can. But here I'm just going to use a baking paper. So I'm going to put it like this. Okay, done with that. Now we're going to put a bit of shape. Maybe I'm going to roll it a bit. Okay, on this guys, maybe I use here. That part. Bring it here. I'm just going to roll it. Let's see whether this will turn out good or not. Mm. Okay. Because there are a lot of excess here. I can scoop out a bit. So that it's not so messy. Mm. That, that will do. Okay, just roll it. Roll it. Yeah. And then just tie up the end. And there you have it. This is a, a butter that's already rolled. So what I do next, I just put in the fridge. Which part of the fridge? The bottom part of the fridge. Just leave it maybe for a few hours and it's going to solidify. Now here, I have made earlier another butter. This is just a normal salted butter. I already prepared earlier. So this is the product that you're supposed to get. So let's look at this. Oh, my hands are quite dirty. Okay, so this is the butter I prepared earlier. Not the oregano one. This is the salted normal one. So this is how your butter going to look like. There you go. I have to touch it a bit. Of course, this shape is not as interesting as the one that you buy from uh, the store. Lah. But see? Just like your normal butter. This is the butter that I'm going to use. A bit uh, in pieces. Lah. But then again, this is the butter that you want. Okay. What are you going to do, Miss Grace? Miss Grace is going to eat it. <laughs> How does it taste like? Like butter. I like butter. Okay, so everyone, that's it. So this is how you do butter. This is how butter is made. As easy as that. You basically just need a whipping cream. That's all. Okay, so next, Miss Grace, what are you going to do? Cheese. Okay, guys. Uh, so just now I told you that I, I, I should show you a lot of ingredients. But for you to do butter, you only use one ingredient, only whipping cream. Because I also told you right, I'm going to reveal something. Miss Grace already revealed it, actually. Next, we're going to look at how to make cheese. Now, to make cheese, I have two types of cheese that I'm going to show you how to produce. Are we going to give them a break? Yes. Do you need a break, everyone? I think mm -hmm. we need a break. Yeah. Uh, Miss Nabila, can I ask questions? Yes. Yes, please. Uh, can I use aluminum foil to do the? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, All right. Any more questions? Mm. Okay. If no more questions, you need to give us a few minutes because we need to clean up all this mess that is already here. For us to go to the next uh, recipe, cheese. There are two types of cheese, right? I mentioned to you uh, just now. I'm not going to reveal yet. So please wait. Please be patient. Later, we're going to come back and I'm going to. In three minutes. Hi, I'm um, waiting for those who um, just uh, want to watch this workshop. Uh, I have prepared a feedback form and just posted at the chat box. 
so if you are um, waiting so maybe you can help us to fill out a feedback form first or if not you you may fill up the form after the workshop um leong en k asks about attendance on um, the attendance we will download from microsoft teams so do not need to fill up the google form we have the record Welcome back. Okay, now next step. I told you we're going to do cheese. Now the first cheese that we're going to uh, produce is a cream cheese. Okay, so to produce cream cheese, these are the ingredients. You need fresh milk. You need uh, lemon juice. Remember, lemon juice is required to remove the protein, the casein. Then next is the salt. All right, so what do we do here? We Again, the measuring cup. Now this time, we need a saucepan. Okay, so I'm going to pour the milk into the saucepan first. It doesn't matter how much at the moment. If you have 200 ml, just put all the 200 ml into the saucepan. Now, if you notice, the saucepan is actually on the stove because this time, we need to heat up. I'm going to heat up using a low fire. All right, here we're going to heat up until it simmers. Now for kids, do you know what is simmer? <laughs> <laughs> simmer is when you have the bubbling happening inside. So I'm just going to uh, stir it, swirl, 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 swirl. Let the heat be uniform, spread to all the milk. a very uh, fast process like you don't have to worry let it simmer for a while we wait, we're going to wait for uh, some solid to come out maybe some bubbles you can see some bubbles are already actually okay let simmer a little bit more Okay, so mm. we have the bubbles coming out already. So once done, okay, you're going to remove it from the stove, away from the stove. It's still uh, whisking it, still uh, stirring it. Now here what I'm going to do, I'm going to, pay, to take a spoonful. Take a spoonful. I need to stand there because oh, it's sorry. not clear. Oh, sorry. Miss Grace is going to move a bit. Sorry. Now we're going to take a spoonful, tablespoon of lemon juice and I'm just going to mix them. Okay, here it depends. If you like your uh, cream cheese to be sour, put more. Can you see what happened here? Can you see the curds coming out solid, separated from the solution? Here, the solution we call it as whey. W-H-E-Y, whey. Okay, and we actually want this. We want the solid part. We call it as the curd. So this is what happened, class. Class, pula. Everyone. <laughs> You are so used to teaching class, you know, so. All right. So this is what we want. We want the solid. Here, cannot really see. Can you see? Anything? Can, can, can. But okay. some complain that the my my camera is not clear. But I'm, it looks okay, very maybe, clear here. Maybe though. I stop. Maybe you can see. Maybe you can focus first. Mm, uh, can. Okay. Yes. So everyone, this is what we want. Next, what do we do? It's just a very simple process, very fast process. With this... With all the solution, I'm going to put, um, using a cheesecloth, I'm actually just using a mug because this is a small amount. So I'm just going to pour uh, them using a cheesecloth. You want to remove the whey here. You do not want the solution. Okay, maybe I can whisk, uh, maybe I can uh, press a bit. The so the amount we're using here is quite mini amount. So... Well, once you are used to the procedures, you can, Increase. if you like it, and you can, you can do it next time in larger quantities. Yeah. So we will expect the curd that we collect this round will be uh, quite uh, small in an, um, in an amount. Yeah? 
I think I uh, some of it spilled. It's okay. Onto the table. Okay, it's okay. So we're going to just pour everything. Again, you so want to you solid? can see we managed to filter the curd out. It's on the cheesecloth now. Oops, I need to wipe that. Okay, what does it? Okay. All right. This is the curd that we want. Okay, now I'm going to press a bit because I don't want the solution. I don't want the weight. I just want the curd. Okay, maybe I'll move it. I'll move the cheesecloth. I'll move the cheesecloth away. And this is again, like what Mr. Grace said, it's just for the purpose of uh, demonstration. We use a very minute amount. Now I'm going to squeeze the remaining whey because we want the solid, we want the curd. So it's going to press. Now here, be careful. Some of the, uh, what the curd, uh, they are very small in size, so they can come out from the cheesecloth. So here it's okay if you cannot remove all the entire uh, whey. But at least try to squeeze as much as possible. Okay. All right. I think that will do. Some already come up, see? Okay, so Those if it's already like that, you, you just uh, stop, finish with that. So this is the uh, dry cut, not really entirely dry, but uh, quite dry, back to the original. Okay, uh, let me just take a spoon. Okay, so we want to remove all this. We want to take this curd. This is actually your cheese. Of course, it's not uh, done yet. Now, next step, the rest you can just throw. Okay, next step. Now, for your information, um, a cream cheese is actually not only slightly sour, it is also slightly salty. So, for the next step, you need to put a bit of salt. Again, how much should you put salt? Again, it depends on how uh, salty or how uh, sour you like your cheese to be. So, next, you just... Mix them together. Now, some of you might be asking why you didn't put the salt earlier before squeezing. Because we are afraid some of the uh, chemical in, uh, reaction will take place. So that's why you have to remove the whey first. Then only you can add in the salt. Okay, mm. so you just mix like that. And I just put into a shape. Yes? I, I think, do we have a question now? Okay. And, and there you go. This is our cheese. So do you believe me that I tell you this is the real cheese? I'm going to show you. You can actually eat it. Please first. Mm. Mm. Oh, for nice. best quality. It's nice. Yes, for best quality. So the next step that you're going to do, maybe you can cast it again into another container and put, bring it into the fridge. Now for today's purpose, I'm not going to show that, but I'm going to show you one of our products, the product of this cream cheese. This is the cream cheese that we produced earlier this week. So this is how it looks like. This is very nice because we uh, actually put quite an amount, I think two tablespoons of um, lemon. Maybe I can show. Also, have a taste. Mm. This one is more sour and uh, more salty. So you can put more lemon juice and salt depending on uh, your preferred taste. Okay. okay, so with that, we finished cream cheese. The next. Um, and for the next, again, uh, I think we need three minutes, no? Okay, so if this is okay, can I see whether there's any question or not? I think we are running out of time. Any questions so far? No? <laughs> okay, if no question, then we are going to go to our very last one. Uh, I think we need to clean up on this. Yeah. Okay, so because of that, I need a, a quick one, a quick, quick one cleaning to clean again uh, our kitchen for the next last cheese for today. All right, be back.
All right, welcome back. Uh, sorry about all these breaks. We have a lot of breaks because of the Maxi uh, experiment. Okay, uh, last one. I promise you that uh, we have another cheese to do. Now, this cheese is known as mascarpone cheese. I'm sure some of you uh, are familiar with it. Some of you might not be familiar with it. Now, this mascarpone cheese is slightly different than uh, cream cheese. How is it different? It's different in terms of uh, first the fat content. Okay, mascarpone cheese is more creamier. Uh, uh, the cream cheese is not as creamy as mascarpone. Then, uh, next question is, when do you use mascarpone? Again, during baking, just like your cream cheese. During baking, during uh, when you make desserts, you use mascarpone. Uh, another difference is, normally we refer mas uh, mascarpone cheese as the Italian cheese, whereas cream cheese is more of an American cheese. So that is the difference between the two. Now, to bake mascarpone cheese, as I mentioned, the difference is in terms of the creaminess so because of that the ingredients will be whipping cream unlike cream cheese cream cheese we use milk just now less fat content so we use whipping cream and lemon juice that is all okay so next let's go immediately to the steps same step again measure your whipping cream uh here right i asked you to prepare only 200 ml uh, pro probably at this point, some of you do not have whipping cream anymore. It's okay. It's fine. You can probably use it, do this uh, other time, another time. Okay. Now here, we're going to heat it up again, just like how you do your cream cheese just now. Put up the stir again, low fire. This time, it is important for you to use a spatula. Okay, to know, uh, to, to measure how thick is your cream. Now, at this point, what you want is you want to produce a thick texture. So, just keep on, you know, heat up and stir it. Let it boil for a little bit. So, they become thick. How thick you want it to be, the heat will be on the spatula. Later, I'm going to show you. Gonna wait for a while. Let it heat up. Mascarpone cheese is normally more expensive than your cream cheese, so it's good if you can't do it on your own. You know. <laughs> okay, I think it's a bit thicken already. Maybe we wait for a little bit more. How thick it will be. Now, the hint is, the tips is to look at be, uh, behind your spatula. Some of the uh, cream already coated the spatula. So, what you do is just put a strike like that. If they do not mix, then this, that's the thickness that you want. I think this is enough. Okay, once done. And same thing again. You're going to put lemon juice because this is cheese. Same concept. You want to bring out the casein, the protein. This time I want to put two tablespoons. I like it to be a bit sour or more curds. I want it to be heavy more curds. So you just keep on stirring. Now here you can see the difference compared to your uh, cream cheese. In cream cheese, you would see that the curds coming out already. But here it is more creamier. It's, um, you cannot really see that there is a curds, but it becomes slightly semi-solid. Not really semi-solid, but creamier, thicker. So next step. Go to the next step. Okay, next step. This is very simple. After that, you just put into a bowl. Here, you do not have to filter anymore. No cheesecloth is required. Okay. And you keep it uh, at room temperature until the temperature cools down to about room temperature. Then you wrap it just like that. You just wrap it and then just put it into your fridge at the lower chamber. Okay, here I cannot show you how long you're going to put into the fridge. It takes about uh, two weeks. You know, yeah, two days. Sorry, you put into the fridge. Uh, it's going to take about two days. The purpose of putting it into the uh, fridge is to dry up the water content. Now, for master body, you do not have to uh, filter. You just want the water content to, uh, to 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 evaporate, to be removed by just using your fridge. Mm -hmm. So right now, I can show you. I cannot show you how to put it because we have to uh, cool down first. Now I have uh, again the product that we beat. This is the mascarpone cheese that we produce uh, on Monday. So it become yellow, yellow in color. 
Okay, I can taste it also. Mascarpone cheese is very nice because it's a bit sweeter compared to your cream cheese. Mm. Very nice. Okay, so there you have it. These are the three uh, products, the three recipes that we want to share with you today. I hope all of you, all of you are following. I hope you try. Even if you didn't try today, I hope you can try on different days maybe. And thank you so much for having us. Uh, having us. Can mm -hmm. we have some questions? A bit? Uh, is there any questions, please? Uh, no, at the moment. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, My sister, anything? Okay, so we see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you for having us. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, um, Miss Nabila and Grace. Bye. Thank you, Grace and Nabila. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Welcome, Miss. <laughs> Funny, eh, Miss? Um, okay, um, before we end the workshop, um, we we'll appreciate if you could help us to fill up the feedback form. And then, um, I would like to do a short introduction uh, about our challenge competition. Okay, so okay, this is the KLSF International Challenge 2020. So every year we will have the physical fair, but this year we can't have it. So the event will help virtually. The competition will be held by video submissions. So this is our website, www.klesf.net. How to go to the tab? So you can see from our website here under KLSF 2020. There's a tab KLSF International Challenge 2020. And then this is our website screenshot. The deadline for submission is 15 November 2020, Sunday, 11.59 p.m. So I would like to brief, uh, briefly tell about the details. There are two categories, primary school and secondary school. The project can address the following sustainable development goals, SDG. There are two goals can be either one. First is SDG 3, good health and well-being, or another is SDG Go, uh, Go 11, sustainable cities and communities. There are four criteria, and the rubrics uh, is available at our website. No fee will be charged for the particip uh, participation and maximum three students per team. No limit to the number of teams from each school and the participation form to be submitted by each team. The form can be by Google Form or the Microsoft Word file. This competition will take the form of video submission and the deadline for submission is 15 November 2020, Sunday. And we will announce the winner on 20 December 2020 at 10 o'clock. The details we will send to the participation uh, participants by email. If you have any question, you can contact Puan Azura, Puan Marian or me and Wenxiang. So you may send to us by WhatsApp or email to us. Okay, this is our Facebook, KLSF Facebook, Kuala Lumpur Engineering Science Fair dash KLSF. So please help us to like our page and uh, we will update our virtual event details at the Facebook page. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, so if you have any question, you may send to us uh, by email or WhatsApp. So I will help you to pass your question to Juan Nabila, eh, sorry, Miss Nabila and Miss Grace, if you have any, any question. And then we will post the PDF file at the end of the day, or I will email to participants also. Okay, that's all. that's all for the workshop today. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And here uh, are some. Thank you, Miss Lee, for the coordination. <laughs> thank you, Miss Lee. Thank you. I, I just saw the photo, so thank you.
problem. Thank you. So if you have any, uh, if you have made your own uh, butter or cheese, you may send us the photo that I will share to the participant to see. Okay, thank you. We will end our workshop today here. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Hi everyone, it's Miss Nabila here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to produce your own butter. So these are the tools and ingredients. You need a whisk, a measuring cup. I have half cup measurement here, 125 ml. You can see. A colander or a sieve, baking paper, a whipping cream, uh, that is 35% fat, salt, a bowl, and also a mixing bowl. Okay, so first of all, you have to measure the whipping cream. So we're going to use 125 ml. You can use 200 ml. It's okay, no problem. I think that's enough. Then we're just going to put it into the mixing bowl. It wasn't clear earlier, but this is whereby I want you to see the different phases of uh, the whipping cream. I'm going to whisk it. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting vigorous motion here. So we're just going to whisk it. Uh, whisk it. It's already very thick. Remember, I told you you just have to continue, and the color you can see that is uh, a bit yellowish already. Okay, so this is the next, they're almost uh, finishing. You can see there are a lot of uh, fats coming out. That's the butter and also some liquid. That's your buttermilk. So you want to uh, separate both of them from each other. Okay, so what we do now, we just keep on whisking until they are completely separated from one another and you will see a lot of buttermilk breaking. the uh, solid that we want that is the fat that is the butter that we want all right so now we're going to go to the next step next step would be to uh, filter I'll filter here okay so we're going to filter the fat from uh, the buttermilk now as mentioned earlier we just want the fat and then it is very important uh, for you to remove the buttermilk in this step. Again, the purpose to remove of uh, to, uh, to remove this buttermilk is to, uh, to ensure that your butter will last longer. Okay, the more you squeeze out, the better it is. Okay, that's enough using the colander. Right, next we're going to just transfer back to the mixing bowl. Oops. Okay, you want to get as much butter as possible. Don't worry about the buttermilk. 
And also, another thing about this buttermilk, don't forget, it is still very useful. You can use it for baking. You can also use it uh, to make your own coffee. So don't waste that one away. All right, now moving on to this. Next step is the washing step. Remember, I told you it is uh, a very important step. Whereby you're just going to squeeze, 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 remove all the excess buttermilk. You can do a few rounds of this. Now again, bear in mind, I'm actually using just um, 100 ml of uh, the whipping cream. So the amount of butter that we produce is not that much. So because of that, the round of washing is also not as much as when you are using a lot of uh, whipping cream to produce a lot of butter. So when you have a lot of butter, probably you have to do this washing uh, a few rounds more. Okay, so now I'm just squeezing out all the excess buttermilk. All right. So, at this stage, this is what I was trying to show you. The water is still cloudy. So, it indicates that there are still a lot of buttermilk inside. So, we're going to just pour that out. And we go to the second round of washing. Alright, now here we're going to squeeze out again. Same process, just repeat. Now at this second round, you can see that the water is actually clearer than the first round. Even though this is still considered cloudy. Okay, now I'm going to go maybe for the last round, third round, just to show you that the water can become clearer and clearer. You see, this water is clearer than the second one. Of course, the more washing you do, the more buttermilk is squeezed out, then uh, your butter last, will last longer. So it is advisable for you to go for the next round. But for the purpose of uh, today's video, I'm just going to keep it at that. So that will be the last round of washing. Just remove all the water. Now again, these are oil. We get our, this is our butter. So it will not mix with uh, the water. Alright, so that's it. Next step, this is the step whereby you can get creative with your butter. I'm going to put salt. I have salt here. It can be as salty as you want it to be. Maybe I'll put two pinches. Right? And mix them. Just now, I tried to show you the, uh, the the one that I do with uh, organo. Can you show that as well? And then I can show you again. I'm just going to cut an oregano. I'm going to keep it for a while, yeah? Now, this is the one I'm going to use. So, we're going to take out a bit. Again, the amount that you want is completely up to you however much that you want okay now you're just going to mix it again here you can be as, as, as I mentioned you can be as creative as you want if there is any excess water never mind it's, it's okay you just remove it out okay you can use uh, parsley you can use garlic you can use uh, maybe capsicum Okay, so there you have it. Next step, we're going to just bring the whole butter to a baking paper. I'm just going to put it back that. I scoop up the excess, the remaining one. You don't want to waste too much. Okay, so here, I'm actually using a uh, baking paper, like earlier. Again, you have the option of using a casting uh, container, uh, an ice cube container completely up to you all right so now we're just going to roll it like how we do earlier this is how I normally do it I'm just going to roll 
to the end and then uh, while I'm on the way, I'm just going to scoop the excess butter like this. Okay. I think that's what, that one is okay. Then we're just going to roll up. Okay, now earlier someone asked me whether you can use uh, aluminium foil, no problem. Aluminium foil, uh, aluminium foil will do as well. I'm just going to roll, 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 roll. And just tie up the end. You can twist it like this. Or you can use, maybe if you have strings, jute string, that will do. And uh, the excess one, maybe just squeeze it out. And there you have it. This is the butter that will go straight into the fridge. Again, you're going to use the lower chamber of the fridge. And guess what? This is the butter that we actually prepared during the live, the live session earlier. Let's have a look at it. Whether it's actually jadi or not. Okay, so you just remove it. Now let's see. I'm so excited to look at that. Yeah. So this is the butter I prepared earlier. Oops. Oh, that is messy. Next, we're going to see how to produce cream cheese. So these are the materials and ingredients. A saucepan, a measuring cup. This is the same measuring cup just now. It's 125 ml or a half cup, as you see. Right? Spoon, whisk, bowl. Here I prepare a mug with a cheesecloth, but the most important thing is actually just this, cheesecloth or uh, a gauze. And then the materials are, the ingredients are fresh milk. This is the main uh, ingredients today uh, for this. Next is a uh, lemon juice and also some salt. Now let's get started. Now as the, uh, usual, first thing, we're going to measure the fresh milk and then put it into the saucepan. Now if you have 200 ml of the milk, you can just use all the 200. Okay, then we're going to put this saucepan on low fire until the milk simmer. Now if you remember, what does it mean simmer? It means there are a lot of bubbles at the sides. So we're just going to whisk it, not whisk it, swirl it a bit. So that the heat is uh, uniformly distributed throughout. I think that will do. So now we're just going to get, put it off fire and then we're going to put one tablespoon of lemon juice. Now while I do this, just keep on stirring. Okay, if you want your cream cheese to be uh, more sour, maybe you can put more than one tablespoon. I like my cream cheese to be sour, so I put more. So you can see that there are already cuts uh, produced here. So this is what we're going to do. This is what we want. So we're just going to transfer into <laughs> this uh, this uh, mark because we want to filter out uh, the solid. Now the solid is the curd as mentioned earlier, whereas uh, the solution is actually what we call as whey, W-H-E-Y, whey. So it contains the remaining of the uh, content of milk lah, other than the protein. So you want to move away all the other excess solution. So you can do this uh, slowly. Now if you have more, uh, if you are using more milk, of course, there are, there'll be a lot of uh, the solids produced. So you probably would want to use a bigger bowl, not a mug like this. This is just for the purpose of uh, this demo, this video. So you can just squeeze it a little bit, bit by bit like this. Or you can use a spoon.
right and the last bead are we just going to oops we're just going to squeeze out the remaining excess way okay so that's it now what we do next we're just going to remove the rubber band and going to squeeze out the excess way into the mark okay so this is what i do now again when you squeeze out since the curd is uh, actually smaller in size it might some of it might come out through the cheesecloth or the gauze so our purpose here is just to remove you see these are some of the curds so our purpose is just to remove as much uh, whey as possible if it is not possible anymore the way uh, the, the curd is coming out so it's fine for example here it can still be squeezed out so i'm just going to keep on keep it going keep on squeezing oops see <laughs> these are the curd okay i think i'm gonna stop here okay so this is the way you don't want the way you want this curd so now i'm going to transfer the curd so this is the solid that we want this is actually your cheese but of course not done yet i'm gonna scoop it out oops scoop it out carefully and then put it into the bowl all right try to scoop as much as you can you don't want to waste that cheese remaining you can just throw okay so this is the cheese that you want of course it's not done yet next step would be to season it with salt now again how much salt completely depends on you uh, based on your preference whether you want it to be salty or less salty okay so you put the salt and then just mix it that's the texture that we want at this point so it's not actually so wet it's almost solidified completely still have a bit of moisture so that uh, the salt can mix okay so this is the product that we want so just to show you that it's actually the real cheese that you can actually taste it so mm worry and salty just like how just how uh, i like my cream cheese to be so next step what you can do is you can put into a container a casting container and then just, just put it into the fridge of course the lower chamber and then you can just use it anytime that you want that you want now of course this is a fresh one that we pre uh, will prepare we also have one that we prepared earlier this was prepared a few days ago so this is how the texture are uh, gonna look like now I'm going to show you that it's actually a bit hardened so maybe we can scoop out a bit you can see so this is how solid a uh, solidified uh, how it will solidify also very nice so you can try this so this is our second recipe Finally, we're going to do the mascarpone cheese. Now again, remember the difference between mascarpone cheese and the cream cheese that we prepared earlier is in terms of the fat content. Mascarpone cheese uh, is more creamier with uh, more fat content compared to cream cheese. Another thing is, uh, mascarpone cheese is more of the Italian cheese and the cream cheese is more of the American type. So now we're going to look at the ingredients. We're going to be needing whipping cream again. A lemon juice, a small bowl for us to put the uh, mascarpone cheese later, measuring cup as usual, and finally the pot in the saucepan. Okay, so we're going to go with the first step as usual. We're going to measure the whipping cream. Right, and then just going to pour everything into the saucepan. 
Now again, if you have 200 ml, just put all the 200 ml here. Now we're going to open fire again. Uh, I can see. We're going to open fire. Low fire. Not too high. Just make it low. And then we're just going to uh, heat it up. Heat the whipping cream up. Now this time, don't forget, we're going to use a spatula instead of a whisk. Remember, there's a, a, a hint to it because the spatula is going to tell you how thick is your whipping cream. Now the purpose of heating again is to thicken the uh, whipping cream until it is of a proper consistency. And the consistency actually uh, can be seen uh, on the spatula. Okay, we're going to wait for a bit. Just keep stirring. Mm, it's heating up already a bit. You can see it's boiling slightly, simmering. Okay, just stir it. You can check uh, the consistency because uh, some of the cream is going to stick I'm going to coat the back of your spatula. So what you need to do now, just going to put a strike. And if the lye doesn't mix, for example here it's not so good. So you're going to stir out a bit. Going to put a strike. The line is very clear, so that's it, enough. Okay? So we're going to move it away from the stove. And then here, again we're going to put same uh, uh, concept yeah everyone we're going to produce a cheese so cheese always require some acidic solution so i'm going to put again one tablespoon of lemon juice again if you like it uh, more sour you can see it could also see it become creamier and more thicker so if you like it uh more a bit sourish sour <laughs> sourish so you can put more lemon juice i always like it more sour so two tablespoons there, and you're just going to mix them, continuing to mix them. You can see some of it become a bit curdled. There, you just mix it, and then once done. Now, unlike cream cheese, you do not have to filter your mascarpone cheese. So what you do next is just that you're going to pour into the casting bowl. Here, I'm just going to use a normal bowl going to transfer everything to this bowl if you have a proper container casting container then you can use the casting container right and that's it so what you do next after this you're just going to put the mascarpone cheese at room temperature let it cool down at the room temperature once you are done you're just going to put the whole thing into the uh, fridge again the lower chamber for about two days now the purpose of putting it into the fridge is to dry up the water content so that it can solidify okay so here i cannot show you uh, how this is done uh, because it's still hot so i'm going to keep it here now at the same time, I also have uh, the product that we did earlier. So we put it into a small jar. So let's look at this. So this is the mascarpone cheese that was produced earlier this week. So you can see the color actually already changed and it's actually already solidified, it become more yellow and uh, quite hard. So maybe I can have a taste. You can see it's quite hard. Mm, very nice so the difference again between mascarpone cheese and cream cheese this one more creamier mm, a bit uh, sweet and a bit sour it's a combination of both so mascarpone is normally considered uh, the more expensive cheese so it'll be great if you can do it uh, in your own kitchen so with that i think we finish our recipes for today and our cooking show bye see you again